Hi everyone, today we're making coffee meringue roulade. The first thing you need to do is make sure that you have a nice clean apron on, that you have your clean tea towels, at least two, and a clean dishcloth, one for your hands and one for your dishes, and make sure that your bench is clean before you begin. Um, first thing, get all of your ingredients out. For this recipe today, you need some spray oil, you need, uh, you need two tablespoons of corn flour for your baking tray, you need four eggs, you need three quarters of a cup of caster sugar, two more teaspoons of corn flour, which will actually go in the meringue, vanilla essence, one teaspoon, two spoon of vinegar, and some um, two tablespoons of hazelnuts, and a teaspoon of coffee powder, I think. Two teaspoons of coffee powder. You also need electric beaters, handheld or a stand bench one. You'll need a large metal spoon for folding, um, some measuring spoons, measuring cups, a flat knife for measuring as well, and a baking tray. I've also turned on my oven to 180 degrees to preheat it. Once you've turned on your oven, you need to prepare your baking tray. Now I'll show you how to do that. So whenever you're baking, whether it's a cake or um, using a baking tray like this, it's important to prepare your tray before you start so that it is ready when your ingredients are ready to be put into it. So with this, you need a large piece of baking paper and you can see the fold lines on there. You need to fold the edges in, so just fold it over, nice crisp line around all four sides. Then have the sides all up and then just give it a little bit of a twist so that it holds its shape. Give it a little twist on each corner. Okay, then pop it in your baking tray and with a little bit of spray oil. Spray the baking paper. You could probably spray the underneath as well so it doesn't move around. Then with your Two tablespoons of corn flour, sprinkle it. And give it a shake to cover all of the baking paper. With the excess, just tip the excess into the rubbish bin. Okay, so that leftover can just get thrown away. So when it's finished, it should like look like that. The sides should be sitting up and a nice coating of corn flour. That can just go aside. So the first thing to do is to measure everything out. I have already measured some things. Three quarters of a cup of um, caster sugar. So make sure when you're measuring it, you dip it in, give it a tap and scrape it off so it's nice and level. Same with the two teaspoons of corn flour, level them off. Important to make sure that your measuring is accurate so that you have the right, the right amount of liquid to dry ingredients. We need to separate our eggs. I have two egg whites separated already. Now when you're separating eggs, make sure you have three bowls. So you've got a cracking bowl, um, one for your yolk and one for your white. Sharp tap on the side, thumbs in, open it up. And just keep the egg yolk onto one side of the shell. Be careful that the egg yolk doesn't get broken from the edge of the shell. And tip it. Put the yolk in one bowl and then your, your white can go in with the rest. It's important to do it separately because if you accidentally get yolk into the white, you're not going to waste all three egg whites. You're only going to wreck the one that you're doing. You actually don't need the egg yolks for this recipe. So you could put them away, give them to your pet dog if they like egg yolk, or you could make it into custard. I'm going to put my two egg whites in there. Your hands will get egg white on them, so you'll need to wash them after you've done that. So you also need a teaspoon of vanilla and a teaspoon of vinegar. So I'll just measure them out. They can both go into the same bowl. So the vanilla will add that lovely vanilla flavour and the vinegar with the acidicness helps um, stabilise the, the egg oil mixture. 
Okay, so I'm going to start by beating my egg whites. Now it's very important that you beat these to soft peak stage. So when um, you do that, make sure you have everything else prepared. Once you've reached soft peak stage, you will need to add the sugar gradually to the water. You need a large bowl to drink this because the egg whites will tickle inside. If I stop now and I lift the beaters out, you see that it's still quite drippy. It moves around a lot in the bowl and it's foamy, but it still is quite air, airy and a bit liquidy. It needs to be a bit thicker, so we keep going. <laughs> As it gets closer to soft peak stage, we'll see that the bubbles will get smaller and when I lift the beaters out, okay, it folds over nice and soft. Okay, so hopefully you can see that. So that's looking pretty good. I now need to add the sugar just a little bit at a time. And the sugar will help stabilize the foam as well. adding the sugar will take probably two to three minutes. You need to really take your time with it. You want the sugar to dissolve. So just a teaspoon to a tablespoon at a time, add it, beat it, add it until you've used up all of your sugar. Okay, so you see this is really thick. The bubbles are really, really tiny now. So the more you beat it, the tinier the bubbles will get. Okay, and it's really getting quite a stable thick mixture, it's not moving in the bowl. Okay, I have a tiny bit of sugar left, I've added all the rest of it. I'm going to give it one more last beat and then we'll be ready. Okay, so my sugar is completely dissolved now. One way to test that is to just, with a clean finger, get a little bit of meringue on your finger and rub it between two fingers. If it feels grainy, it will need longer. If it feels smooth and you can't feel any grains, then it's right to go. Next you have your two teaspoons of, of corn flour. We're going to sift them in, and that's just so they don't clump all in one spot and then it stays clumped in your meringue. Your vinegar and your vanilla. And then with your large metal spoon, you fold them in. Now with folding, it's a rotation movement with the spoon, and it cuts through and it makes sure you don't lose any air. Right, if you stir it, if you use a stirring motion, you'll push the air out of your meringue. Okay, by folding it, it keeps the air in it. We've just spent all that time adding the air, we don't want to push it all out. Rotate the bowl at the same time, and when you're cutting through the mixture, go at different levels. So go through the top layer, then through the middle, and then right down to the bottom, so that the corn flour, vinegar, and vanilla goes through the entire mixture. Okay, it might take 30 seconds to a minute to do this completely. Once you're ready to um, put it onto the tray, you will need to get two more teaspoons of caster sugar to mix with your hazelnut meal. Just combine them together. Now, if you have nut allergies, then you could just use um, chocolate drinking powder um, or you can just leave it out. Okay, so now to try and transfer this mixture onto the onto the baking tray. So a normal traditional pavlova you'd put as one big pile, but this one we're going to we need it flat. So spoon it out around the tray. Get your plastic scraper. Scrape out the bowl. Okay, the more you get out of your bowl, the more you have on your tray. You will be able to hopefully spread it.
Now this side of it will be actually end up being the outside because we will roll it from the other way. Okay, that looks pretty good. Now I'll get my hazelnut meal and my sugar and sprinkle that. So this needs to go into the oven for 10 minutes. Hey Google, set timer for 10 minutes. Okay, so I've just got mine out of the oven. Don't forget your oven mitts when you get yours out. So you can see it's nice and golden brown on top. You need a clean sheet of, again, so we have to turn this onto there. Not sure if I'm going to be able to do that without making a disaster. A tray like this will help. And flip it. Take the tray off. Oh no. Be careful, it doesn't stuck. And mine broke a little bit. When we roll it, we'll be able to hide those little mistakes. Gently take it off. If it's stuck anywhere, be gentle with it. And you just let that cool down at room temperature while you whip your cream and get everything ready. So I have three quarters of a cup of cream here. I have uh, my coffee, which I'm going to combine with a teaspoon of boiling water. Okay, so to dissolve that. So to make your cream, you need your beaters. I've got my blended coffee and I have a little bit of vanilla. I'll whip the cream first. A measuring jug like this works really well. You can whip cream within a million minutes. Be careful not to overbeat it. It needs to be light and fluffy and to be able to hold its shape but not too firm and definitely don't make things butter. Once it's really thick, I'm going to now add a teaspoon of vanilla and my, my coffee. Or if you choose, you might like to have drinking chocolate instead, so it's a chocolate flavour instead of coffee if you don't like coffee. Or you could leave it out altogether and you could put um, passion fruit, um, passion, tin passion fruit on there or chopped up strawberries, whatever you like. Okay, once it's nice and thick, won't turn out. Okay, it's ready to go. I'm going to take that away and put it straight on the bench and it's time to assemble. So I'm going to put my cream on. My, my pavlova or my roulade is now cool enough to put the cream. Don't do it while it's still hot, otherwise it, the cream will just melt and will make a mess. Spread that around and leave about a one to two centimetre space along the edge. Use the paper as a guide. You start off small. Okay, on your, along your long edge and very carefully roll it. It may crack, hopefully it won't. Gold star to you if yours doesn't crack, but using the paper and hopefully that helps. Roll it just really gently, really slowly. You just want to give it a little massage as you go. All the way. So it looks like that. Just going to put that back on there and just give that a little squeeze to make sure it's in shape. Okay. Then go find yourself a nice platter, a nice rectangle platter to put it on and ready to present and to serve. So I have mine on a platter. It looks pretty good. I feel like though it could do with some more decoration on the plate. I found some chocolate that I'm just going to grate over it because definitely coffee, hazelnut, chocolate, it all goes, it all, it's all good. Okay, so I could do that and then that might decorate it up a little bit. You could put shards of toffee along it, you could put fruit around it, whatever you think. All right, enjoy, I hope your family enjoy it and yeah, bon appetit.